welcome back to the Armchair Trader podcast. And those of you who were not able to attend our Beyond the Channel event in London in November, um, sadly missed out on a great chance to hear from Khalid Hainsworth, who is CEO of Legible, um, who was one of the companies there. Um, but you're in luck because we've got him on the podcast today and uh, we're going to be shooting some questions to him now about Legible, which uh, we think is actually a very interesting company indeed. Um, they've got some great ideas, um, in, certainly in the, in the audiobook space, um, but I'll leave Khalid to provide a little bit more perspective on that. But firstly, Khalid, welcome to the podcast. I am delighted to be here. Thank you, Stuart, and thank you for the kind words at the top of the podcast. So to kick off, uh, many people will not be familiar with Legible. So can you give us a quick, I know it's going to be difficult, but a quick summary of, of the company? <laughs> Absolutely. Legible is a globally accessible online book platform. We combine millions of ebooks and audiobooks into one reading system. We don't make people deal with tokens. There are no limits. There are no credits. Uh, it's sort of an all-you-can-eat uh, reading and listening experience. Uh, you know, we also offer AI-enhanced classics, which we're developing and releasing at a rate of one a month, and more soon after that, we can talk about maybe that later. That's a really fun thing that we're doing. Um, and also multimedia books as well, and I can share more about that in, in, in the near future. Essentially, a legible member can read and listen to their books in their native iOS, their Android, uh, on the web, or now in their auto car, in their automotive. So because we've just released the legible automotive app, excited to chat about that as well. And we have a librarian AI woven into the entire book platform as well that can also provide more um, algorithmic uh, uh, discoveries and conversations about the books on our platform and, um, and the vast quantity and um, being able to provide more discovery for people. And when I when I first heard about the company, um, and it's going to be something that occurs to a lot of investors, it's um, a case of, well, hang on a second, don't we have Audible out there already? You know, they're really well established. Um, how can you compete with somebody like that? I mean, what really, in your mind, differentiates um, Legible from something like that? I've been hearing I've been hearing people ask that question a lot, and. There's a few different things here that uh, are important to mention and a few different ways that we are fundamentally different. Maybe I'll start with how we're different just to kind of put that out there and set the record straight, but also uh, some other reasons uh, that we're really, uh, uh, we're not concerned necessarily. Of course, we take seriously uh, their presence in the market. They're, they are in not, not they are not in all the markets, but they are in some of the markets. But um, first of all, we have a competitive title count. People are going to find most of the books that they want to uh, read on Legible. And we're adding hundreds of thousands of books all the time in multiple languages uh, and from, for anybody in the world to access. As I mentioned earlier, you know, we don't have tokens. We don't have credits. We don't have limits. Uh, you don't have to worry if you've only listened to, you know, one book and you can only listen to two books in, in a month because you only have that many limits and credits. You just listen and explore and read and and um, uh, chase your stories throughout the platform the way you would music on any other platform or films on the Netflix platform, for instance. We also have ebooks and audiobooks in exactly the same place. So what is different between us and say Audible, as you as people might ask, is well, first of all, we also have our ebooks there. We have millions of ebooks in exactly the same place that you can access your audiobooks. So. We're like Kindle and Audible combined into one limitless reading and exploration experience. You know, another key thing, a uh, key difference is we're a lot less expensive. We are $10 US every month for both ebooks and audiobooks. So you get everything combined and that limitless experience. We don't think that there's a better offer on the market for, for uh, people. In addition to that, you can access us everywhere. You can't, we're not just a single app. We're iOS, we're Android, we're accessible on the web, and now we're accessible on in autos. No special software, no special devices, so we're uh, immediately accessible. That makes us different. We're the only company that's providing AI-enhanced books plus multimedia content to our members on a regular basis, and I look forward to chatting about that. 
And we are also driving original content into our membership plan uh, as well. And frankly, I think we have an easier user-friendly design for people to use. And um, we also now have our legible automotive app, and that also makes us different as well. So there is quite a lot of differences, but fundamentally, legible is not of great interest to, or sorry, um, Audible and Kindle and the Amazon system are not of great interest to younger generations. They're looking for more sophisticated uh, approaches to books and to literature um, and access uh, directly on the devices that they already use now. When I was first looking at the company, I, r I remember thinking, well, this looks really interesting, but boy, they're going to have to get some, um, get a wriggle on and get some tie ups with some of the big publishers. And this is going to like, you know, make or break growth of the business. But um, it certainly looks like you, you, you cracked that one already. Can you tell us a little bit more about, about those tie ups? Yeah. So we've signed international agreements with HarperCollins, Macmillan, Simon & Schuster, Hachette, Ingram, uh, Bookwire, uh, DeMarc, some of the largest distributors in the world. And we are uh, always bringing on new publishers, uh, hundreds actually more uh, of the largest publishers in the world have signed up to use, uh, to put their books on Legible, including foreign content distributors as well. We are also in discussion. Everybody always asks me, well, what about Penguin? I didn't hear Penguin in that list. And we're actually always, uh, we are in discussion with Penguin. When we sign them, they'll be the fifth of the big five that we'll have signed. And um, uh, that will really sew up the whole of the international uh, ebook and audiobook market for us. So um, really our uh, catalog was incredibly important. We wanted to ensure that we had, I guess, table stakes uh, with the largest uh, platforms in the world like Kindle and Audible and Kobo. And, um, and that was critical for us because we not only uh, wanted to offer people, uh, you know, this amazing access and experience of having an un unlimited reading experience as well as these multimedia and exciting new original content uh, for a 21st century digital publishing audience. Uh, but we also wanted to ensure that they had a competitive title account uh, to where they could go elsewhere. Uh, we wanted to ensure people could get the best and the latest and the greatest books that were out there. And uh, uh, we're very, very grateful uh, that we have been able to do that. And that's largely been on the strength uh, of Legible's business model and uh, unique differences uh, in the market today. And earlier on uh, on this call, you mentioned the magic words artificial intelligence, which will have many people's ears perking up because it's such a a hot topic in the investment community at the moment. Um, can you go into a little bit more detail on how artificial intelligence features in the legible offering? Everywhere. We started building our library in AI before artificial intelligence uh, became a buzzword in November of uh, 2022. We uh, started developing our library in AI uh, in actually February of 2020. And uh, we uh, released it uh, in February of 2023, I believe. Uh, fully released it into our uh, both our web uh, web app and then in the summer in our uh, iOS and Android apps. And also, by the way, in our automotive app. And I'll come to that shortly. So AI is really a thread that runs through everything that we are doing, and it's essential because we are in the perfect industry for AI um, uh, tools to be built. We are in the industry of books and learning and knowledge. And we have been uh, treading very carefully, by the way, with our AI uh, uh, development and use because our publishers are very concerned. And I'll come back to that in a moment. But this AI uh, runs as a sort of golden thread through everything we're doing. We are now building and soon deploying a revised web page, which is going to allow people to sign up using an AI for conversation. So you show up at legible.com, you sign, you go to click to sign up for the service, and now you're talking to the librarian, which is asking you some very basic questions. And then when you're finished your conversation, all of that, those, you know, your your personal information for your 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 account is placed in your account service 
And then all of the books that the librarian has ascertained uh, you would be interested in are all put forward uh, on your browse page so that they're ready there when you arrive. So you can see that we're really building AI into the, the customer experience as well as into the search experience that we've already released. But we've gone further than that and we have um, really innovated new ways for AI to be used within books themselves. And that's in two different ways, Stuart. The first way is in using AI to help people access content in text form. And then the other is using AI to help people access content in audio form. And the way that works is we developed an, a system to allow people in the books to actually have conversations with characters in the book the, they're reading that will allow them to have a deeper engagement with the, with the text itself. And then on the, on the audio side, we are currently developing an AI uh, API that will connect with the 11 labs AI synthetic voices uh, a service that will allow us to unlock millions of audio or ebooks and make them instantaneously at the at the tap of your screen actually into an audiobook that is read to you by a voice that you get to choose. And later, uh, we're so excited to be introducing a feature that will allow you to upload your own voice or a voice of somebody you care about that will then be able to read those books to you or to somebody else in that voice itself. And we see tremendous uh, possibilities for that as well. So we are using AI um, uh, in our content service and member service uh, deeply already. And we are the first in the world to introduce AI as a librarian service directly on a book platform and the very first in the world to introduce AI tools directly within the books that our legible members can access, such as Animal Farm AI or a Christmas Carol AI or our upcoming uh, celebrity books uh, that we're embedding AI in. So, but we are doing so uh, to ensure that, uh, we're doing so in a way that will ensure that our publishers know that we're, we're doing it ethically. We are not training our AI on their content the millions of books that we have. We are uh, not uh, creating content using AI. We are using AI to help human beings access content in a more meaningful way, but also access it in whatever way they can access it and need to access it. Because fundamentally, legible is all about accessibility. And uh, you've, you've hinted at um, high profile launches, celebrity launches, um, I know that there are some you can't talk about. There's obviously some you can talk about. Um, are there some you can mention now? Um, and, and do you have a degree of exclusivity on some of these? Yes. Legible Publishing, which is another revenue vertical for the company, is quickly making it name, a name for itself internationally in several key areas. First of all, in the AI enhanced book uh, launches that we're already doing, Animal Farm AI and A Christmas Carol AI. Soon it will be Frankenstein AI. Velveteen Rabbit AI is coming out as well. Uh, but in terms of the celebrity um, book launches, we have some extraordinary um, names to bring up uh, and uh, we'll be doing so over the coming months. We are imminently launching Christina Ferrari's uh, book, cookbook called My Model Kitchen in which uh, she has 15 volumes of this book uh, and each one is devoted to a different kind of um, culinary, um, a different culinary subject. The first one we're releasing is all about pasta. And Christina Ferrari is a, an, I, for those who don't know who she is, she's an iconic supermodel, uh, really a part of history. And she has had an extraordinary life just in and of itself. She uh, uh, later in life uh, is even a cancer survivor, uh, but she's also uh, and discovered later in life a, uh, a New York Times bestselling cookbook author. As a matter of fact, um, her friend uh, Oprah Winfrey, uh, who she tagged in a post about Legible last night, by the way, um, 
called Christina the second best cook she's ever met after her mother and possibly Maya Angelou. So uh, we're really excited about Christina's uh, book. Yes, it is exclusive. What's really great about it is we have videos by Christina um, cooking and, and talking to people uh, in her own kitchen uh, in the book itself. Not only that, but Christina worked with Legible to develop her own sous chef AI, which sits embedded in the uh, recipe of every one of uh, in, in every one of her recipes in the book, and allows you to do things. Let's say, for instance, I'm not sure if this has ever been the case with you, Stuart, um, but let's say, for instance, uh, you are. Uh, you, you're reading one of her recipes and you want to cook one of her recipes, but you don't have one of the ingredients. Well, the sous chef AI is right there, perfectly placed, just tap on it in the book. And then all of a sudden you are, um, you tap on it on the book and all of a sudden you're talking to it and it's providing suggestions, uh, about what to replace it with, what to do and the differences and that sort of thing. So it's really exciting. Uh, to see that and it will communicate with you in any language that you want if you want the recipe read to you for instance in italian it'll read to you it'll talk help you through in italian uh, so we're excited about that book uh we and uh, uh on everything that is happening um we're being featured at the orange county fashion week in march because of christina and this book and we have an exciting year ahead with her and we're releasing a new volume of christina ferrari's uh cookbook new cookbook series my model kitchen every two months actually so uh we're excited about that but then that's just just the beginning uh steward of the people uh and uh celebrities and the people that we're working with to produce their high high-end books very excited about it uh, that's fantastic and again something that you've 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 touched on very briefly earlier on in this podcast um and that's a thing i found really quite interesting which is um your partnerships um, in the automotive sector, the mass transport sector. Now, this is something that sets you a little bit apart from other companies in the space. Um, and, and names like um, Tesla, for, art, for instance, have been mentioned in recent news that your company's put out. Um, what's going on there in the, in the automotive space? Well, Legible is the first mover in the auto industry, and we have an opportunity to capture quite simply, an enormous market share globally through these automotive deals. Uh, we have the potential through these deals of quickly reaching markets internationally, Stuart, which have never had book platforms access them before through OEMs that are already established in those countries. We have contracts, for instance, with four automotive app distributors to deploy like our own custom built automotive app into potentially millions of vehicles uh, this year. The Live One Slacker Radio um, is its own agreement. Uh, they provide audiobooks and, uh, and uh, or sorry, they provide content to Tesla Radio and Legible will be providing previews of that content uh, to Tesla through this arrangement. Um, and, uh, and then obviously, that's branded content as well that we're offering. Um, but with all other uh, vehicle manufacturers we're being offered in, Legible will be a standalone native app in the car's infotainment system. And Stuart, that's just the beginning. We're not only a first mover and into these auto markets, many of these vehicles will, will be the first and only uh, audiobook and ebook app uh, in their vehicles, uh, but it's being built for and styled for those vehicles themselves. But not only that, but we're also talking to the, to the distributors and the automotives, uh, our partners about developing books that will be specific to the automotive, uh, industry. So as cars continue to develop and believe me, they are becoming less car and more gadget now more 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 technology than car and as cars develop more um infotainment systems become increasingly all-encompassing because we're moving towards a uh driverless future and so the infotainment systems are even i've seen them with my own eyes in in these 
rooms that the automakers have t- I've even been in to see, and you can see uh, surround sound um, um, screens, for instance, that are being developed for cars not too far in the future. But for now, there are a tremendous amount of systems within the car that allows legible, for instance, to be able to develop specifically for the infotainment system of a specific vehicle or manufacturer to allow people to have heightened experience of audiobooks, for instance. Um, and certainly already, as of now, access of, uh, to ebooks uh, in those books or in those automotives as well. And some people say, well, what are ebooks going to be like? You can't read an ebook while you're driving. Um, but there are seat, there are uh, um, screens in the back of seats now. Uh, and increasingly, one of the biggest, most used apps in the infotainment system in cars today, in modern cars today, are gaming apps. So there's a huge audience for people that are consuming content in the vehicle and not driving it. Not and so for those for all those, we'll have ebooks uh, uh, and these interactive uh, books and audiobooks as well. But for everybody, we'll be right there offering audiobooks and um, uh, for drivers. Yeah. And and indeed, I mean, here in the UK, I know a lot of money is being spent on smart motorways and holding out the prospect for you know driverless vehicles and, and how you're going to be able to drive on motorways without having to actually be paying attention where you're going. So I can see, um, you know, the potential for that is, is enormous. Um, I mean, more prosaically, and it may be hard for you to estimate at the moment, but how important do you think that will be as a revenue stream to the overall business if once you get that up and running? Well, I think it'll be. I think it will be foundational, frankly, um, and it will be. It will be a, a very significant portion of our early growth. But I, I will say this, and I'm, I'm not providing any forward disclosure here. By the way, I want to be clear about that. I want to be clear that I'm just I'm just talking. I'm not going I'm not giving any, you know, anything like that away. But here's how my opinion will uh, how I feel from an educated opinion is I really think that our automotive uh, uh, play will bring us um, a a lot of traction right away uh, and will continue to develop and grow that traction. But it will quickly be outpaced. Uh, by just general uh, subscription or uptick of our subscribers uh, and and not and through our, our global publishing. You know, I haven't mentioned yet that we have global exclusive rights to 12 never before seen Stan Lee characters and uh, stories. And we're releasing those at a rate of one. Uh, we're releasing comics uh, that have been uh, that are being made specifically by and for Legible's own platform by some of the biggest comic writers in the world right now. And we're releasing those at a rate of one a week, I think starting this summer. I might be wrong about that, but I think it's starting this summer. And and um, that is a forever industry that keeps going and going and going. And we keep developing and we're only doing four stories in the first year. So we have three more years to introduce four more characters and stories into this ever expanding universe that we're developing. Uh, so we know just on that vertical and our um, our publishing vertical and our increasing um, membership and subscriber base, we know that that will outpace uh, the automotive. But it's going it's such um, an, a critical market for us because we know how much value we can bring to it and how much value it will bring to us. Uh, uh, over time. And I wanted to touch on also um, Legible's social mission because you have also embedded that as a key part of the the business. Um, you want to make the world a better place at the same time. Um, can you can you talk us through through what you're trying to achieve there as well? I would be delighted to. And it actually pulls everything together, Stuart. It's a great question. Thank you because everything that I've been talking about can be summarized in really three words, accessibility, sustainability, and literacy. That's really what Legible was founded on and what guides every one of our decisions. So 
accessibility does not just mean, although this is critical, making sure that Legible has tools for people who struggle, for instance, with um, ADHD, for people who struggle with any kind of reading disability of any kind. Uh, we want to make sure that they have equal access to content. But accessibility also means that uh, socioeconomic accessibility, ensuring people have different ways um, and, and, and can access this content in their own way. But it also means making sure that we are giving it to people in every way that they can possibly try to access it. If they're in a part of the world that only has the web, well, we have a browser-based solution for them, and it's all about accessibility to make sure that we give them that. If they can download it, if they prefer apps, they've got that. If they're in cars, now we are going into cars and giving them more accessibility there. And of course, um, if they if they need tools to help help them access and learn more of that content, we're bringing in our AI tools to help them with that as well. So really, we know the impact of a reading system on society and on people can change the world. It really can. Look at what happened when the Sumerians introduced, for instance, the cuneiform way of, of writing. Look what happened when we began, when we came up with the codex style of books. Look what happened when Gutenberg invented the printing press. It just changed how we operate. It changed the world. And now we have a digital environment in which in which we can make books accessible to people in ways that they've never been accessible before. And that can change the world dramatically, but always in a sustainable manner. So we know that if we're successful, and we've done a ton of research on this, that we can take out at least uh, 1% from the global carbon budget yearly by ensuring that no more uh, personalized reading devices or uh, single-use reading devices are needed to access books because they take an enormous amount of energy and younger generations don't want to use them in that capacity. However, um, uh, also taking uh, dependence off of uh, print books, for instance, is also critical because we because the industry that developed around print really developed in a way that that um, in the 30s, when you have mass market paperbacks, that is not a sustainable solution anymore. We need to rely more on digital and audiobooks and less on print books and save our print books for important documents and for important books in our lives. And on the literacy side, well, that's really where where we're all about. That's what it all got started for, is to give millions, billions of people access to millions of books globally, to help people learn to read. And we're building tools in constantly for that purpose. If you go onto the web browser today, for instance, you'll discover that you can have the books read to you in the voice that is already installed on your system. Because we want people to learn and to, and to, and to have access to literacy. And we've, we know and have done all our own research on this too, uh, Stuart. We know the impact of literacy on communities. When girls are taught how to read and the impact that has on local economies is really, really noteworthy. It's worthwhile, the effort. So we're building our reading system and our business already to uh, live out accessibility, sustainability, and literacy because we know that in doing so, we can make a meaningful impact to change the world at a time when the world need, needs more stories. And we've already been working with organizations such as Room to Read, which is an international literacy organization that I think is in 17,000 schools worldwide and just received uh, $10 million from Mackenzie Scott, who is a large shareholder in Amazon. So we uh we know that um uh this can this this really is defines who we are and we know that it can make a difference in the world and when we get up and all the challenges that we face on a day-to-day -day basis as a as an executive team and as a company uh this is what guides us this is what keeps us going uh, that 
That's great. That's fantastic. Um, um, and, and, and really also, again, you can't really say an awful lot, but um, just um, in terms of the plans you have ahead, can you give us a summary of that for, for 2024? Our plans ahead are all about capturing market share and building monthly recurring revenue for the company through building our membership base. And we're doing that through our partnership, through advertising. We're doing that through strategic publishing with uh, high value, high impact authors. And we're doing that uh, through just living out our values. What that looks like in, in, in terms of uh, um, specifics, that looks like a lot of advertising. You'll see us everywhere and doing everything. Uh, you'll see us uh, some really fantastic auto partnerships about you know coming up here, and uh, and and really the deepening of those relationships with those auto partners. Uh, and then you'll see us um, uh, this year developing some really critical features. One of which I've already mentioned, which is the uh, text to speech ability, giving access to books that publishers want. Uh, access. I should add that as well. Not all publishers want <laughs> want this, and they have a right not to. But uh, a lot of publishers and independent authors, authors do. Uh, we'll be looking uh, into uh, just giving a constantly better user experience for our members. Really, we want to delight people. We want Legible to be a place where. They can have just the best experience exploring books and finding their next read and more. And we know that that is an ongoing journey. So look for a lot of uh, um, app improvements and developments and new features uh, in the near future. Uh, but we're going to deepen our transportation industry in the coming year. Uh, and we're certainly going to focus on uh, uh, building out more and more AI enhancements in our books as well as in our platform. Oh, that's fantastic. And uh, and the share is currently trading on the CSE in Canada. And uh, you managed to get hold of the stock ticker READ, read, which I thought was a nice touch as well. That is also true. We're also trading on the Frankfurt Exchange under READ as well. And we're trading on the uh, uh, OTC, uh, the QB, uh, under L E B G F. Yeah. But yeah, we, we got read, um, and, uh, we're going to, uh, we, we're rather proud of that actually. Um, it's exactly what it is yeah. what we are all about. <laughs> no, I thought that was ideal. Fantastic. No, thank you very much indeed, colleague, for, for coming on the podcast today and, uh, telling us a little bit more about what's going on in legible. I think that's a really interesting company you've got there. Thank you so much, Stuart, and as you know, read legible, <laughs> as it were. But uh, I'm so um, I'm so glad to be here, and uh, I'm uh, grateful for the time we've spent. Well, thank you, thank you, Kelly Kainsworth of Legible. Thanks very much indeed. You've been listening to the Armchair Trader podcast. Make sure you visit our website www.thearmchairtrader.com for your daily dose of financial markets news, and sign up to our free newsletter there.